Joining me now is James Sung. He's the chief strategist at Zocus Strategic Marketing, a Chinese American firm. Um, obviously, Viscuit doing pretty well, but let's talk about some of the challenges out there because we're seeing it again uh, just this week. Sweden banning Huawei and ZTE from its 5G network. Uh, they buckled under pressure from Washington. How much damage is this campaign doing to these business models, do you think? Well, um, I'm not going to be too diplomatic about this because I'm not a diplomat. I mean, I, 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 uh, before this interview, I made a list of uh, the good things about Sweden. And uh, I mean, basically, uh, I started with uh, Swedish girls, uh, Swedish uh, fish gummies. And then, you know, I wrote down Volvo. But then I thought about it. You know, Volvo is actually uh, a Chinese company now. I mean, that was... Uh, uh, Sweden's uh, landmark, uh, you know, automobile company, and they were bought by Geely, and then, uh, then there, of course, there's Ericsson. Uh, Ericsson, uh, back in the day, I remember uh, one of my first cell phones was a Ericsson phone, back in uh, 1998. Uh, but uh, you know, in the year 2000, it was already out of style. And then later on, uh, Ericsson, uh, of course, a, a, a Swedish company, uh, they. Uh, they were they did a partnership with Sony Ericsson because they uh, they can make their own phones well enough, uh, and then you know that partnership fizzled out. So you know I, I think there's a uh, there's a lot of posturing going on because really if you look at the facts, there's no risk militarily to them. There's no risk technologically to them. I mean Sweden's population is only 10 million uh, compared to the city I'm in, uh, Shenzhen, 13 million. So, you know, looking at China's population of 1.4 billion people, I mean, we're looking at a market that's less than 1% of China. So, you know, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter to China that uh, Sweden is doing this. I mean, who's the loser? Sweden is. Uh, looking at your list, I think it's a good one, but you forgot schnapps, uh, which is a, a big thing in Sweden. And if you've ever had them, boy, it whew, can knock you on your uh, keister, so to speak. But uh, we know where the Trump administration uh, is on this. Uh, do you think this hostile landscape changes at all between the U.S. and China if the outcome of next week's election goes in another direction, as the polls suggest at this point? Well, uh, I, I, uh, I just got my uh, email ballot in. I mean, for the first time in history, I'm able to vote uh, by email now. So, uh, you know, guess who I'm voting for? It's, uh, it's probably not going to be Trump, huh? Uh, but, you know, November 3rd is Election Day, and guess what? November 4th, I think whether or not uh, Trump wins, uh, if he wins, I think, uh, I think, you know, a lot of this stuff is going to go away because he was just posturing for the election. And uh, if he loses, then I think, uh, you know, the stuff is going to go away. So I think none of these tech companies now are very worried uh, about um, the future. James, let me get you, before you go, just to give me your thoughts on Ant Group. And, and this biggest IPO is going to be in China. Uh, well, uh, this is the, the craze now. I mean, it's, uh, you can't open a newspaper or WeChat, you know, without reading about it. Um, it's, uh, it's, you know, one of the few companies that's able to list uh, in, in two uh, stock markets at the same time. And uh, it's not like if you want to buy it, you can buy it. It's, uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the craze now. I mean, you have to be in a lottery system in order to get shares for it. And um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's great. I mean, uh, Ant, Ant Financial is, uh, you know, it's, it's – uh, with Alipay, uh, was uh, and Taobao, and I mean everything Alibaba is is golden here in China. 